Hi everyone, welcome to our first day of looking at the whole theme of truth uh, in John's Gospel and we'll be looking at this for the next fortnight. I want to begin in quite a strange place in a way, um, part of one of Paul's letters, his letter to the Romans. Paul, when he writes, is writing to ordinary people like you and I, but sometimes his writing, because it's so carefully thought and often very reflective, it can seem really dense at first and we can wonder what he's talking about. But bit by bit, as we unpick it, it can mean an awful lot. And this is what he has to say in Romans chapter 3. What advantage then is there be of being a Jew? Or what value is there in circumcision? Much in every way. First of all, the Jews have been entrusted with the very words of God. What if someone were unfaithful? Will their unfaithfulness nullify God's faithfulness? Not at all. Let God be true and every human being be found to be a liar. As it is written, so that you may be proved right, O God, when you speak, and prevail when you judge. But if our unrighteousness brings out God's righteousness more clearly, what shall we say? That God is unjust in being, bringing his wrath? Certainly not. If that were so, how could God be judge of the world? Or well, someone might argue, if my falsehood enhances God's truthfulness and so increases his glory, why am I still condemned as a sinner? Why not say, as some slanderously claim of us, let us do evil that God may result? For well, their condemnation is just. What's Paul talking about here? Well, he's talking about many things and there are whole volumes written about Paul's letter to the Romans. But in the context of us looking at truth, I think there's something really basic which we can grasp hold of. What Paul's trying to say is truth is like light. The light burns in the darkness and that light is the faithfulness and the love of God. And strangely, something which is so beautiful, something that gives us hope, something that gives us a sense of purpose and certainty. Strangely, as human beings, we also shy away from. We look instead for the shadows. We will, as you perhaps picked up, if nothing else in that passage, we'll twist it and turn it to suit our own ends, saying, well, if, if we're unfaithful, maybe then God shouldn't judge us because actually it enables him to be more forgiving or whatever. And we will do that in human relationships and we will do that in all manner of ways in our own thoughts and prayers with God even self-justifying ourselves or trying to find a loophole, a way out of it. If we only put the same amount of energy sometimes into trying to be faithful, and we all fall short of that. But the good news then is there is a God who is light and who seeks to bring love. In the Jewish tradition, which Paul alludes to, and he came from a very big Jewish strong background, he's not trying to say that somehow Jews are better than anyone else. In fact, he elsewhere says, no, Jews and Gentiles, people who are Jewish and non-Jewish are exactly the same. But what he's trying to say is that the Jewish people have been given some beautiful, wonderful, priceless crown jewels, if you like, which are the truths of God. And one of those is about God as creator. And God as creator is a very powerful image in our modern world that there is this wonderful creation. We watch it with Blue Planet and other programs but there's a God of the one creation and there is one God. Now, on the one hand, that's a real challenge for many people today because we like to think, well, we're, we're very polite people and we don't want to argue with people. But actually, biblically, there is one creator, one God. Isaiah 45 talks about this quite a bit and it says, actually, there is one true God. Not just that we've picked the right one, but actually that God loves absolutely everything and everyone and that's good news because that means there's one truth and one body of truth it's not private truth you believe what you want to believe and I'll believe what I want to believe as we may see so often on our media and in the, with our politicians at the moment no there is one truth but that truth often can be um, seen as under underneath everything else but here it's being allowed to come to the front and as Christians, we've got to come out from behind our own private walls in churches and whatever and be willing to say, actually, there is one public truth, one, one God of history, one God of science, one God of everything that is, not just a God of spirituality in the church. No, it's one God of it all. Another story for another day. But isn't that exciting? Isn't that wonderful? 
that we can indeed come out from behind our walls. The second thing is that within the history of Israel, there's the story of salvation. One of the images that God gives right in the story of the burning bush where God describes himself as I am, Yahweh. He says, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. It's not just saying I'm a God of the past. It's, he's trying to say, I am a God of repeated salvation history. I want you to come from darkness to light, even though you may think of yourself as only worthy of the shadows. No, I want you to know that I have light. And of course, as Christians, we believe that came to fulfillment in the person of Jesus and in what Jesus has done, not just for us, but for the whole world on the cross. So truth is at the very heart of our gospel, but it's not just there for those who are into that sort of thing. It's actually there for everybody. And it is the truth as much as the world is round and night follows day and day follows night. Have a good rest of the day. Bye for now.